Hi guys, it's Joe Tommaso from the 15 Minutes With podcast. Our show is geared toward helping to keep not only teens, but people in general out of our jails and prisons. Our show is unique in the fact that we use real inmates throughout the country and they explain not only about the cases that caused their incarceration, but why it's so important for people to stay out of prison and remain free. Speaking of free, have you heard about the newest and best way to put your podcast out there for the world to hear? Let me tell you about Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to produce and distribute your ideas, your podcast, and the best part, it's free. There's even a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you so people can hear it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other listening platforms. You can even make money from your podcast and there are no minimal amount of listeners required. Anchor is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get started. Hey everybody and welcome. It's Joe and thanks for listening to this edition of the 15 Minutes with True Crime podcast. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. First, as a lot of us are still sheltering at home for the most part, I hope that today's segment finds you and your loved ones well, healthy, and in good spirits. We're all going to make it through this and we're going to come out better and stronger. I just want you all to know that not only are you my listeners, but I care about each and every one of you. On this edition, we're going to be talking Talking to Jeff Garcia. Jeff Garcia was formerly an inmate at R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility, which is a level three facility in San Diego, California. He has since been relocated or transferred to the Valley State Prison, which is a level two facility in Chowchilla, California. He is serving a 10 year sentence for robbery. Jeff is going to tell us a bit about what's going on at the facility, but more importantly, and this is really important that you guys and ladies who are headed down the road that will take you straight to jail or prison, you need to listen to this. Jeff is going to tell you what happens when you do something wrong and you get sucked into the system from the arrest to court, then to jail or prison, and then the rest of your life with a record. 15 Minutes With is different than other shows because our guests are prisoners who are still inside of prison walls. Our show is not like corporate prison shows like Lock Up or 60 Days In because our shows are not scripted or sanitized before they're put out there. You guys are hearing real stories from real prisoners. These guys and girls are not minding their P's and Q's for the show. This is the real deal. If you like the show and would like to see it continue and get better, please hit the like and subscribe button. Also, consider making a donation to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. Again, that is paypal.me slash J. J-O-E-T-O-M-A-S-O. Every dollar helps and goes right back into the show. Also, if you want to get notified when I drop new content, please hit the notification icon. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, or if you have somebody you want me to try and interview, please email me at insidetherazorwire at gmail.com. Again, that is insidetherazorwire at gmail.com, or you can snail mail me at P.O. Box 162, West Haven, Connecticut, 06516. And now, without further ado, here's this edition of 15 Minutes With. To refuse, hang up now or... Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hello. 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 Joe. Hey, Jeff. What's up? How you doing? Okay. Okay, good. Um, uh, I don't know uh, what you... If you want to, I have some stuff here written down. Okay. All right. My name is Jeff Garcia. Uh, my number is AY9110. I'm calling from Valley State Prison in Chowchilla, California. Okay. Um, uh, from what I understand, this is mostly uh, for uh, younger people, um, possibly going into the wrong type of life, lifestyle that can lead you here. Right, exactly. Um, Okay, so the thing is, is when you're headed down this direction, um, uh, as soon as you get in trouble, um, it's kind of focused more on a, uh, not necessarily the truth, but negative uh, impact right away. So a police report isn't necessarily going to be uh, totally true. It's going to be uh, uh, biased against the offender. Right. The report's usually the report's going to be written in that manner to put you uh, in a more guilty light, mm-hmm. um, regardless of, of, of what uh, 
how you participated in the actual crime. Um, when you go to the system, uh, the prosecutors also uh, aren't necessarily looking for the truth. They're looking more towards prosecuting you uh, for the offense, uh, not with the report. Um, uh, you know, it starts building up uh, in this uh, negative way to just constantly... Uh, They're looking for a conviction. Right, right. It, it is, it's just, it, it, you know, it really builds up... Uh, Right from the beginning, as soon as you, you get in trouble, it starts building up more and more and more, okay? Then you head to the county jail where you have, you know, any number of people with you that are uh, all going through the same kind of stuff. You know, you're fighting for your life inside of a, of a uh, going through a court system. You know, uh, there a lot of people are volatile, a lot of negative moods, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, self-created uh, drama that you're around, and it starts to eat at you uh, internally, you know, mentally, and it starts to uh, affect you and your decision-making. Um, uh, you know, uh, after that, you know, uh, if you're headed to prison, uh, once you get to a prison, uh, certain facilities are different uh, out here. They're different levels, uh, one through four, mm -hmm. depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. And um, normally a yard where you get to, you got about a 1,000 uh, people, uh, between 900 to 1,000 uh, on each yard uh, with different backgrounds. They all have different vices, different drug addictions. Uh, there are different maturity levels. Mm -hmm. Some uh, are more uh, mature than others. Uh, a lot of people are mentally unstable. Um, some people have been abused physically, emotionally. In fact, most of them have. And, you know, it's a big uh, chaotic environment, you know, that can be... Uh, 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 it's uh, manipulative. Uh, there's a constant, you know, uh, alpha male uh, syndrome going on with everybody. Mm -hmm. And it just causes more and more damage to you uh, mentally. Uh, now, also, when you get convicted, that's something that stays with you for the rest of your life. You know, that you're going to go, you know, if you get out, if you have an offense that you're going to, you know, eventually get out from, you're going to have that felony charge on you, and whenever you go to get a job or whatever, they're going to bring that charge up, correct? Right. Now, it doesn't matter what good, you know, anybody's done, what I've done, what anybody's done in our life. Whatever it is, it's going to stick with you forever. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I've been convicted of several different offenses. They're mostly minor, uh, you know, property crimes, uh, petty theft and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but it'll never be erased and it'll, you know, it'll be with me no matter what, no matter what uh, positive or good things that I've done throughout my life, that's going to be there no matter what. See, that's what I try to explain to people. No matter what good you do, it is still there. They're going to bring that up. I just, you know, try to explain to them that that conviction is going to be there forever. Uh, what, uh, another thing I'd like to point out is once you're here uh, and you're in the system, um, there's different ways that uh, things are dealt with here. Uh, uh, there's different roadblocks that can be put up intentionally to hinder anything that you're trying to do positive. Mm -hmm. uh, this specific facility that I'm in is geared more towards self-help. they got, uh, you know, programs for youth. They have, uh, you know, a, a program to train dogs. Uh, uh, veterans, dogs, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of self-help programs. There's a lot of things like that for people to get into. Uh, the facility I came from isn't necessarily like that. Mm -hmm. um, I came from Donovan. Um, that specific facility, uh, you know, there are programs that you can get into, but there's different things that happen. Uh, uh, you know, there's a lot more uh, physical violence, a lot more drug use, a lot more stuff like that. Right. Um, you know, if you if you have an issue with you know with another officer or something for for whatever reason they may not just not like you based on who you are as a person. It could be your crime. It could be your behavior. It could be any different number of things. There's things that they can do to hinder whatever you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen these are all things that I've seen mm -hmm. or encountered myself. Uh, um, in a more extreme thing, they can go from you know planning. To this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. They can go from planning uh, drugs or weapons on you. They could actually assault you physically, you know, um, with nobody seeing. Mm -hmm. um, they can send inmates after you. 
Um, a more subtle way that they can operate would be uh, uh, they can house you with somebody that's known to, uh, uh, you know, either be a bully. You know, if you don't use drugs, they can house you with a, with a you know, with a really bad drug addict. Right. Um, you know, if you're, really, if you're really clean and you have, you know, some people are OCD about, you know, their cleanliness, they can stick you with somebody, you know, that's very filthy or has a disease or anything like that. You know, um, if you're uh, life, if you're doing life and you're trying to get out and, you know, you've done 10 to 15 years of positive programming mm. and uh, uh, positive self-help and stuff like that, they can just write you up for something minor, which would cause you to stay in here for another five or 10 years. You know, there's any number of things like that. Right. You know, they can make a, a mathematical certainty to where you just won't get out of jail. You know, ultimately, you have the choice and you have the decision but there is a lot of hindrances that you have once you get here. Right. We also talked about, um, you know, different uh, affiliations with gangs and stuff. Once you get affiliated with a gang or something, you got to watch out for that as well. Because once you're in there, you're in there. Right, right. I mean, you know, that that, that could make you a target from a different gang. It could make you a target for from the, the COs because you can sit back and actually watch the behavior and you know, you can kind of see where somebody's going, especially somebody younger because younger guys are 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 really uh, uh, targeted for mm-hmm. different things. So um, once you get involved in that, you know, it just takes you down a whole other road and you're going to pick up these habits and you're not going to be able to, to get rid of them, you know. Uh, it, it's very difficult to unlearn some of the things that you're picking up in here. Right. They, they basically, I know basically a lot of people think that jail is nothing but crime school. And that's, you know, if you're trying to change, that's one thing. But some people go to jail and they basically learn to do things better when they get back out. You know what I mean? Yes, right, absolutely. Uh, the thing uh, I would like to point out, what, what is helping me, uh, I am a Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ezekiel 3626 says, I'll give you a new heart, a new mind. Mm-hmm. I'll take away your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I uh, I use that throughout my, uh, every day for me is a battle. Uh, with, no matter what it is, there's something there, uh, some roadblock, something that I have to move away from or get out of the way. And uh, I can't control anybody around me. And I know that uh, ultimately uh, my behavior and the things I do uh, uh, are going to reflect on everybody else around me also. Um, but you're trying to change for the better. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, I've done some good things in my life, but this is, like I said, this is what I have to fight through now. And this is uh, can be very tough sometimes. So. So what are your intentions right now with your in you know with being there? I mean, I know you're going to do some programming and you're going to try to you know make it better for you. What are your what are your intentions? I mean, what do you what are you thinking of doing for programming, and what do you think that's going to accomplish? Uh, I'll possibly uh, you know I'll do the programs that they have for us here when we get off the the quarantine, mm-hmm. um, and possibly go to fire camp. Uh, and get out uh, within the next two years, hopefully. So just for people who don't know uh, what the fire camp is, can you kind of explain to them what it is? Sure. Uh, um, right now I'm doing 80% of my sentence. Uh, they have fire camps where you go through a training process uh, anywhere from three to six months, I believe. And once you complete that, they send you to camps uh, without the, throughout the state to fight fires in, uh, uh, in high, high fire areas of the state. Um, and that'll, that'll bring the percentage down from 80 to 33. So I'm doing two days for every one that I actually serve. I'm getting two days credit. But basically what you're oh. doing is you're, fight, you're fighting fires. Absolutely, yes. And that's contributing to the community. So this is something good that you're doing out there. Right, right. That was, that's my next goal uh, in six months from now. So, um, and as far as the coronavirus, what's happening uh, with you guys there? I know you're on uh, modified programming. What else is going on in there? Uh, we, uh, we have, they issue us masks uh, every morning. Uh, we can trade our older mask for a new mask. Uh, I believe PIA, uh, the, the inmates uh, in the PIA laundry, uh, manufacture them. Mm-hmm. 
uh, so we can get a new mask every day, and we're required to, mer to wear the mask at all times outside of the cell. Uh, we're doing social distancing as far as feeding. Um, we go uh, a building at a time to the chow hall, and we sit uh, two people only per table. Mm -hmm. um, the building officers also wear the masks. Um, we are only out for two hours a day uh, for yard, only with your... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So we are social distancing here also. Okay. Uh, are you guys getting uh, soap, uh, sanitizing, and all that? They are passing out. They pass out all the, uh, the, the, the chemicals. Uh, we get bleach. We get... Uh, Something called cell block sixty four. Okay. They have the uh, they have the porters uh, on the outside uh, cleaning the door handles. Um, this they keep this place uh, very clean. They keep it sanitized. Good. This uh, this place sounds like it's a lot better than Donovan as far as the cleanliness goes. Absolutely. You have this is that's you know uh, there's a yeah this is a whole different uh, place here. Uh, absolutely. Uh, this is a. Uh, it's clean. It's safe. It's um. It's a good environment. It's uh. Like I said in the beginning, it is geared towards self help. It is a level two. Donovan's a level three. Okay. Um. It, there's not a, a lot of the mental uh the mental health issues that were in Donovan. Those things aren't here either. Um. They uh. Focus on uh. uh they quell any sort of uh, rambunctious behavior immediately. Okay, we're coming into our last minute, so if you can we tell... Have 60 seconds remaining. There we go. Uh, if you can uh, tell people, um, if they're heading down the road to winding up in prison like you did, what would you tell them for them to avoid going into prison? Uh, again, it's going to be uh, uh, your decision making, uh, the choices you make. Uh, when you're young, uh, you're hang the people you hang out with are going to uh, affect everything that you're doing. Um, uh, don't drag you down. Uh, if you feel yourself going down that road, uh, it's time to uh, get away from those people, from that environment. If you have to stay home, if you have to, uh, uh, you know, get away from these people that you, that you're around that are that are leading you down that direction um, or if you're leading somebody else down that direction um, change uh, change what you're doing that's the bad thing about these 15 minute calls when the time's up the phones just cut you off i'd like to thank jeff for his interview and thank you all for listening to this edition of the show please stay safe and stay healthy out there and keep your spirits up i really really appreciate and care about each and every one of you Thank you, Dolores and Susan, for contacting the show. I plan to open a Patreon account soon, and I'll be sharing both letters and artwork, among other things, with those helping to sponsor the show. In the meantime, if you'd like to help sponsor the show, please donate to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. Again, that's paypal.me slash J-O-E-T-O-M-A-S-O. Until next time, I'm Joe Tommaso, and I'll be seeing you soon.